Welcome back to the realm of unpopular opinions and today I will be doing a video that is not necessarily book related but I am still so excited to make it. You've read the title you already know why I'm so excited and it's my favorite TV shows series of all time. This is going to be a wide variety because I am never pinned down to just one thing to watch. Unlike books, I watch almost everything. So this is going to be fun for me. Maybe you'll get some recommendations, but maybe not because a lot of these are very popular. And I will explain what each is about, why you should watch it, and why I think it's, why I consider it one of my favorites of all time. And without rambling on, let's just get into it. I am so excited, not just because it's another thing I'm very passionate about, but because I rarely get to gush about TV shows, if you know what I mean. This is a books <laughs> video, usually. So, let's go. The first one that I'm going to talk about is obvious because you already saw the title, but Friends. <sighs> Where do I get into this one? I don't remember when I watched it first, but I know that since then, the first time, I think I watched it every year. And it was a long time ago. This is the definition of a comfort show for me because I can watch it literally at any time, even though I watched it through like, I don't know, 15 to 20 times, however many years I've been watching it. But I can play it when I'm feeling down. Uh, I do a rewatch literally every year. But whenever I'm feeling down, I will just play a random episode and feel better immediately. This, I feel like the characters are my friends. I understand the irony, pun intended. I feel like I know them. I feel like I <laughs> love them. And I use the references in everyday life all the time. I love how the show is simple. And yet, so many situations I can apply to my actual life. There's a reason why I use the references all the time, and that's because I feel like I can relate to so many things in so many situations. And even if I can't relate, they're so funny. They're so funny <laughs> that I just die laughing every single time I watch them. There's like a collection of scenes that I will probably laugh at every single time that I watch it. So this is a show that for me is perfection in the sense that not that I love everything in it. Of course, not every, every show has dud episodes. But a show that I literally will never get tired of. Probably ever. Ever. And until the day I die, I will probably rewatch it every year. Now, <laughs> if you don't know, somehow it, the show is a comedy about friends living in New York. There is six of them. Three guys and three girls. It started in the 90s, finished in the late 2000s. It has 10 seasons. The quality gets so much better as this show goes on. And I appreciate that a lot. Like, I've rewatched seasons 5 to 10 more than I've rewatched 1 to 4. I think I watched the last couple of times, actually, that I watched it. I just started from season 5. So, I have nothing else to say about this. This is probably my favorite show of all time and the answer that I always give because there will never not be a time when I'm not in the mood for it. The next one I am sure not everyone will agree with and I would understand but I love it so much and clearly as you saw Merlin <laughs> the BBC Merlin uh, I love that show with all of my heart I understand that it had a low budget so the CG was pretty much ridiculous in the beginning but I love it I love it so much I don't even care that the production value is so cheap because I probably, uh, yeah, I also watched it when I was younger. And I also rewatched it <laughs> yearly, sometimes. Yeah, yearly. Maybe sometimes a bit less, but I will also never get tired of that show because I am so attached to the characters and the actors that I, <laughs> I will always be able to watch that show. Even now when I'm spoiled and used to prettier shows, the characters are everything to me. Everything. Merlin and Arthur and Morgana and Gwen and <laughs> all the knights... And Kilgara, I... Okay, so it's a BBC show that's older, but it's such a classic. Yes, it looks cheap, but the characters and actors are truly what make the show. It is a combination of wonderfully magical and mystical. Uh, 
funny, hilarious at times. <laughs> like, I absolutely die. Also heartwarming, heartbreaking, excellent character development. The only, f like, qualm I have with the show is the fact that the ending was so rushed, but I think that's because they were cancelled, if I'm not mistaken. The ending was a bit rushed, but I still love the ending. It was just a little rushed. So, essentially, the series is, in my mind, perfection. And if you're someone that can get past the bad visuals, even though it gets better, definitely watch it because the friendships and, I mean, there is a romance, but the friendships and the brotherhood and the togetherness and how some people lacked friendship and how some people, how little events actually caused someone to go off the rails and the, and the magic is absolutely wonderful. I'm, I do realize this is just going to turn into a gush <laughs> video more than a, an actual review video, which is fine. But yeah, Merlin will always, always be this close to my heart and I will not hear any, any insults <laughs> directed at that. Absolutely not. The only one I'm willing to admit is the visuals. Now this show I have also watched so many times is ridiculous. I, the first time that mom showed it to me, I think, I thought they were ugly and I didn't want to watch. But the first time I watched it for real, I fell in love with it instantly. Although the waiting was pretty much painful between seasons. But this show is so brilliant that I'm not even kidding. It took us, <laughs> gigantic fans, two or three watches of the last season to actually love it. That sounds like a bad thing, but it first we were disappointed. Then it was a bit better when I watched it next time. And then now that we rewatched it this summer, we understood everything fell into place and it was actually beautiful. So <laughs> Gatiss and Moffat, Moffat, how do you read? I have no idea how you read that. You guys own me, and I've watched this show so many times. I'm currently re-watching it with a friend, even though I watched it during the summer, because I will never get tired of it. And how they handle the characters without being mean, but also you understand why they are behaving the way they're behaving, and the relationships they establish, and how it's technically all cases that they solve, even though it's all interwoven wonderfully and beautifully and it's so satisfying when it all falls back into place every sentence is intentional and when you watch it again and again you will not be disappointed because you will catch on to something new and it's gorgeously filmed and they got the best actors i still find it funny that gata said who should be the smartest character in the show and cast himself which fair sir fair i understand but it's everything to me. Also, a BBC about a show about Sherlock Holmes in the 20th, 21st century. So basically there's phones and stuff. And it was, it's over now. But you don't have to suffer like we suffered for years in between seasons. You can just watch the entire thing. The episodes are an hour and a half. So it's basically like you have three movies per season. And it's absolute perfection. If a show that's clever and not just, like, I like it. If a show that's genuinely clever and brilliant was good, like this good, I would call this perfection in the way that Friends isn't because it's a different genre. I wouldn't say they're clever. They're just funny and comforting. This is actually brilliant and I love it so much. This one I am currently re-watching because I watched it technically only once and that is Dexter. I watched it once all the way through, like six years ago. Uh, then I re-watched like season one and season four a couple times I remember. But it's been so long that I didn't remember it completely so I re-watched it. I'm up to season six now. And it's cemented as also one of my favorite shows of all time because I couldn't believe how it was so quality for so long. Like, don't get me wrong. 
I didn't reach the ending in the rewatch yet, so I don't know how I will how I will feel about it this time. But I remember loving it last time. Everyone's just bitching about it. I loved it. I remember I really really loved actually how the entire series was handled the first time. We will see now, but. I mean, five seasons out of eight is still a really good show, like top notch. I remember season six being really boring, but again, five out of eight is a really good ratio. So I couldn't believe how much I loved Dexter this time. I knew I loved him, but I loved him even more. He has an incredible mood and I relate to him so much. I mean, yeah, I don't want to chop people up, but aside from that. I loved it. I love the show. I love the characters, character relationships and how, again, even though it technically has a romance, it doesn't center on the romance. It has so much more going for it. And if you don't know what Dexter is, it's eight seasons. It's coming back for a new one, though, now in the new year, 2021. And it's a show about a about a murderer who also works for the police. And it's a bad description but just watch it it's technically a crime show it's pretty much a crime show but with an interesting twist and how genius and brilliant and wonderful the writers of that show are top notch my congratulations to you and i am so happy that i'm re-watching it right now now the next few are going to be a bit different and you'll see why this is where we get into the different genres like so far i had fantasy comedy i had crime and psychological and then i had crime but comical i had very different genres but now the next one is clone wars by george lucas and the others star wars clone wars the animated show that might be also i mean <laughs> i'm not ranking these these are all my favorites of all time Aside from Friends, that's also a show that I can watch anytime. Absolutely. When I'm feeling down, I'll just sit down on my bed, open up my laptop, and just play Clone Wars. Because it comforts me. <laughs> it's my favorite Star Wars content, and there's so much of it. Because it's also in the, like, tw 20 plus episodes that are all 20 minutes. So there's a lot of it. And... I couldn't believe that I didn't watch it before. When I watched it the first time, I fell in love with it. And I watched it so many times since then and I still haven't had enough of it. I can always watch this show. Because if it wasn't clear, I love Star Wars so much. And I was so happy that there's so much more content that I can consume. I was so grateful when I found out that it was actually good content. So yes, that show I'm always in the mood for. There are some aspects of it that are a little bit like clearly childish because it's for kids but it's a very small part and also some episodes that I physically can't watch but when you skip those not many believe me and how the CG improves over the years when you look at season one and seasons five and six it's absolute perfection and if we got Clone Wars basically taught me that a lot of stories should be told in the animated medium because it's beautiful and they have more room to do whatever they want. Like they can cast, the actors don't even matter in regards to how they look. They just need to be good voice actors and sometimes they can make you feel more like that. And you have so many more opportunities with drawing than with CG and effects and stunts. So. Clone Wars really made me believe that everything that I love should be adapted into an animated medium. And the next few favorites will definitely support that theory. The next one is a completely different genre, but somehow also the same genre, which is anime. Now, I'm not a type... Not, I'm not an anime type. I've never really watched it or gravitated towards it because I'm not going to say that I don't like it because as you will see, I learned to. I don't like the dramatic. I don't like dramatic genres, how they're screaming all the time. And they're very much more dramatic than what we usually watch in the English speaking region of media. But the first anime that I watched was Death Note. 
and it's now on this list <laughs> because I got past the differences and the story was incredible. It was pretty much Sherlock, Sherlock and Moriarty, but in an animated form. And it was so clever and intricate that I had to watch it a couple times to figure some things out. And some people might not like that. I, I love that. Because when you go back and figure something out, it just makes it that much better. I loved Death Note so much. I recently had a reading log with the manga and that pretty much opened the gates <laughs> for me and loving that type of show. But yeah, and also if anyone wants to ask, yeah, of course I watched it in sub. I, I absolutely despise the dubs usually. One exception being Attack on Titan, but on a similar note, I'll just mention here, I almost put Attack on Titan on here, but I couldn't because all of these that I'm currently watching, or most of them, are finished. So I actually know that through and through, they're my favorites. I can't put, put Attack on Titan here if the ending sucks so much that I can't even lay my eyes on it anymore. So, but make it, a, make it an honorary mention because I love it also with all my heart so it's very very close but it all depends on the ending back to death note <laughs> i used to be creeped out when i saw Riek, so i didn't want to watch it but when i first did when i finished the show i literally just started watching it again because it was that good so if you ever have like a little bit of prejudice towards something because you think you wouldn't like it still give it a try because Believe me, when you get used to the differences, you can appreciate how good it is in reality and absolute perfection. I love both the Sherlock and Moriarty characters equally and that's what's so fun about it because you technically agree with both of them. This next one is the only one on this list, if I'm not mistaken, that is unfinished and that would be Castlevania which is also an animated show I didn't know it was considered anime but I guess that's because of the art style it's like an anime not like Clone Wars but I didn't know if it was considered an anime considering it's originally English like it's not a Japanese show so I guess anime anyway <laughs> but I fell in love with it At, like <laughs> from the beginning True, I started watching it because I love Richard Armitage and Grant McTavish. And I know the voice of Alucard for Merlin. But not just the voices. I fell in love with it for everything that it is from the first scene to the last one. It has such an interesting and intricate but also entertaining plot. I think it really, really proves that it's not just for children. Because, like, I mean, just like the last two that I mentioned, I wouldn't show these to children. If I had watched Castlevania as a child, I would probably have nightmares. But I I find it the superior form now, as I already mentioned. If all shows were made like Castlevania, I think I would love them a lot more. Because the voices really shine when you don't have to see the actors do the stuff. Because they really get to pour their talent into it. And the artists, my hat's off to them. They are geniuses. No wonder it takes them a couple of years to do it because some of the shots and the action scenes, this is also relevant for Attack on Titan and Castle Castlevania, but some of the fight scenes are better than anything I've ever seen in any other realistic medium. It's so superior that I have, I've started to prefer it. I've literally started to prefer it. I I cringe at some of the action scenes with CG now because the drawn ones are so much better. I watched Castlevania last year. I already rewatched it once. I will probably rewatch it again. I know it's not finished, but I it's a show that we're not really sure what the end goal is anyway because it's a game adaptation. So it's not like I feel like I will lose a lot if the ending is bad because it's so good throughout how the characters interact and their personalities and the magic they use and where they go. I don't think it really hinges 
on the ending like Attack on Titan did because there's like a goal there so it matters what the ending is. For Castlevania I can't see myself really hating the show when it's done because I don't know I just don't con consider it something with the goal that we strive to achieve so there is a goal but I don't know, I just don't feel like it's the focus and I wouldn't really mind if it wasn't that good because everything else is excellent, so. But it's definitely adult. <laughs> it's definitely adult and you need to know that before you watch it. It's gross and gory and there are sex scenes, so. <laughs> Not many, but definitely an, an adult show, but yeah, Castlevania absolutely made me look differently at how my favorites should be adapted. have three left and <laughs> as you can see the next one is a very very weird one but Dracula we watched it when it came out like the show with Jonathan Reese Myers and we loved it so much I still have it on my computer I already watch it from time to time Gen generally I do maybe I just love the Dracula trope as evidenced by the last show if I didn't mention, yeah, Castlevania is about Dracula and vampires. But Dracula the show, I loved so much how it was made and acted. And I loved all the actors and the plot and how it carried out. I was so bitter when that was cancelled. So bitter. <laughs> but I still kind of liked the ending. So it's, thank God they came together in the end. But... It's a classic story of Dracula. Basically, I have nothing else to tell you. He finds Mina in another reincarnation and there's Harker and stuff. I loved how they portrayed Dracula and his best friend. I love it. But I love how they portrayed him and how the plot was made a bit more modern, but still not completely. I love the show and I won't apologize for it. I am still angry that they canceled it. It's also a British show. A lot of these are British, I'm realizing now, but I loved it so much. The entire plot and everything. I don't have much to say about this, but I will forever be angry that I don't have more seasons of this. Considering all the crap that's being produced, it's an embarrassment. Considering that none of these are ranked... I'm just gonna say it like this. Vampire Diaries. <laughs> now, it's not on the same level as the others. For me, it's like a little bit... It's more of a guilty pleasure if I were to ever have one because I don't necessarily think it's great. But I've rewatched seasons two to f two and three and four, even though I don't like four. But seasons two to four, I've rewatched so many times it's become a comfort show. I watched it while it was coming out when I was really younger and I just I'm emotionally attached to the characters I think that of the era that some of us <laughs> grew up with when like Pretty Little Liars and all the other shows were coming out in Gossip Girl I think Vampire Diaries was really quality really really quality the plots were interesting the creatures were really interesting and every new character introduced was actually someone you wanted to follow and getting hate for that but I actually love Elena up until she becomes a vampire so yeah I I can watch that show anytime it's also a comfort show for me I feel good when I watch it <laughs> because it's familiar and I also feel like I know the characters and they're actually my friends so yeah I don't necessarily recommend it to everyone as quality but I think that of the guilty pleasure shows that we had it's the best one and I don't really regret when I rewatch it because it's so familiar to me. I just feel good when I rewatch it. Comfortable, cozy, even though it's pretty much a horror show. But yeah, I love it so much. Definitely. Favorite characters? Uh, Stefan, Caroline, Elena pre-vampire, and Klaus. I have others, but these are just the top ones. And favorite ship, Claroline. I will not even hear an opinion about that. We're gonna close this off with a lovely, beautiful, heart-wrenching show. 
which is Anne with an E. Also a show I didn't want to watch because I thought it was ugly. Then I watched it in like a day. I think that's the best show that was ever made in these times when shows are gross and sexual and violent and modern because it's a recent show and it's so wholesome and beautiful the show pretty much gives you the feels you get when you watch pride and prejudice like someone looks at each other or holds hands not even that and you feel butterflies and flutters and you feel in your entire heart the love it's a show about friendship family beautiful beautiful romances and childhood i mean it's anne of green gables and with an e so if you know the story you know what the show is going to be like they really followed the books though because i started reading the books they really followed the books <coughs> and it's beautiful it's beautiful it's heartbreaking heart-wrenching heartwarming i have cried cried to that show from sadness because i was touched or moved in some way then again from sadness it's this show is everything absolutely everything do yourself if i will recommend everything anything do yourself a favor and go watch and with any i am sorry for the emotional journey you're about to go through but you have to watch it it was cancelled and i will never ever forgive whoever cancelled it for that but it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful the best thing that has come out of television in this messed up time for media and it's a crime that it was cancelled because it's so wholesome and beautiful and it deals with some heavy themes but while also being light-hearted and fun i have so many adjectives for Anne with an e but the slogan should be just go watch it and do yourself a favor because you will not find anything better than that and yes, I did cry for like every episode while watching season three. It was coming out weekly and I cried to every single one. I rewatched it with my friend recently because she'd never watched it. I cried again. So yes, it's an emotional wreck, but so worth it. So worth it. I was never, never this invested into a relationship as I was into the relationship between the main relationship, not to spoil anything. So yes, I wanted to close out the video with this wonderful, beautiful, absolutely spectacular, splendid show. That about wraps up this lengthy, lengthy video about me gushing and ranting about my favorite shows of all time. And this is like a conclusive list. These are top 10. This will never, ever change. I am 100% sure of that. So if you wanted recommendations, even though a lot of these are very popular, if you wanted recommendations, here they are. I am always open to talk about them, so comment away. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this journey. <laughs> even though this isn't bookish content, I thought it was somewhat fun to watch. And thank you. Thank you for watching, basically. I will see you in my next video.